you just start to draw and you could just retrace the eight over and over again until you rip through the paper. You know, you cannot really do that with another digit, you know, only maybe the zero. Everything else, if it's a two, you start and you stop. A three, you start and you stop. Anything else, you start, stop, square up, something. But the eight is infinite. So within the number itself is the science. So I'm just highlighting that as we're in the eight months, the eight day, you know, and um, we're still busting at 2020, so you don't know how that go. So yes, my brother, we're in the month of August. And just a few days ago, from the 1st of August, we celebrated or uh, uh, we remembered what was considered to be the emancipation of slavery here in the Caribbean. As you know, I'm in the island of Antigua in the Caribbean. We have been carried so far beyond where we really belong. And the, the height is that the 1st of August represents 1834, represents the day when the shackles and the chains came off of the black man and the black woman's uh, um, feet and hands and necks, at least here in the Caribbean. Of course, we understand that that so-called emancipation, I would equate it to maybe what your ancestors in the U.S. Um, partook of the Emancipation Proclamation of the 1860s. Basically the same thing. Um, just a gesture of supposed freedom, but the full emancipation, the full freedom, the full liberation has never really come yet. And rather worse, we're going deeper in the Mary clay as we are psychologically and spiritually, and, and let's not even speak about economically enslaved, for sure. Even during the time of so-called slavery, I more like to say that we were prisoners of war more than slaves as such. In fact, I believe that now we are slaves, you understand. Some of us, we have no idea. We do anything they say. You will wear a mask all day long, even in your sleep. Now we have become slaves. You know, we are good robots. Just program us and press the start button, and we just do everything that you put into us. But the, 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 the 1st of August is very important, too. In 1914, just giving us some, you know, in 1914, that's the official beginning of the Universal Negro Improvement Association. And let me just say to your audience, eh, we just we might sound light as we're beginning here, but we're going deep. We we are going deep this evening. Eh? So let, let, let me not make anybody fall into the, the pit or anything or, or thump the toe or anything. Let me prepare you properly. You know what I mean? Fasten your seat belt and and get your oxygen mask and the full works, you understand. So the 1st of August 1940, you know, that aligning uh, uh, as well with the whole aspect of emancipation. We have Marcus Masai Garvey himself forming the Universal Negro Improvement Association on that day. This is specifically in Jamaica, 1940. And of course, in 1920, there was this great... Um, conference of all the African, the free African peoples of the world, as Messiah Garvey would have called it. And this was in Harlem. I know you're quite familiar with Harlem. And at this conference, the Declaration of the Rights of the Negro Race was brought forward by Marcus Messiah Garvey. And it is in that declaration, uh, Article 39, we will read it sometime in the program, where he stated that the the red, black, and green, and I'm going to begin to share my screen, my brother. The red, black, and green specifically is the the symbol of, can you see the red, black, and green? Marcus Garvey? Yes, sir. Okay, just want to make sure, pardon me. So he, he clearly showed that the red, black, and green from that time, and that time was the 13th day of August. And let me say that is very, very key, very important that you could remember that that it was the 13th day of August wherein we had the red, black, and green established to be our banner, to be our flag. Now, as I said, Marcus Masai Garvey, especially to the audience, I know most of us, we would know of Marcus Masai Garvey, but again, I would like to begin as it relates to us as a people during you know the, the 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 period that we call the enslavement period now we as a people you know that we are coming from a heights we are coming we are the people that established the 
the wonder of the world, which is known as the Great Pyramid. When you look at the structure of the pyramid, when you consider this is a monument with over two and a half million blocks, each block is between 10 and 100 tons. Just understand this, eh? but there is not another structure on the planet that is so geometrically sound, that is so aligned with the cosmic and aligned astronomically like the pyramid. There is not another structure that we have understood that has so much within it as it relates to prophecy decoded within the mathematics of it. And I'm speaking specifically of the Great Pyramid of Giza. If there's another that is running a, a, a very close first runner-up, it's something that we as the African people have created. Look at the Lalabella temples in Ethiopia that we've carved out of, out of the mountains and just and, and they, they, they're, they're as beautiful or even more so than any cathedral in the Western world. We didn't mix mortar, we didn't mix cement or anything to do that. We just carved it out of the mountains. And of course, we can go on and on about our glory and how we used to read stars that they've just discovered a few hundred years ago, if that long, hundreds upon hundreds going into to the thousands of years we have we have this we, we already could map certain stars to the point that we created dance a dance and a whole a whole a whole theater around the movement of binary stars specifically speaking of Sirius a and b and of course you know i'm speaking of the dogans so i'm saying it's good to comprehend that a people of such standard as marcus gabby has taught us somehow got into the hands of another people, if that is the right term, and brought to a, a, a point where we have gone through 400 years. For those who in the United States would go with the concept that 1690 was the, the first, was the year when the first set of slaves I think landed in Virginia, 1619. So many would see that 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 uh, 2019, that's last year, would have brought that 400 year period as it relates to when the slave trade at least began, when slaves first set foot, basically, or Africans, I should say, prisoners of war, step foot at least on the United States of America. So but whatever the case is, the 400 year period is very key. Within the Bible, it speaks about this captivity going into the, the land of captivity in ships for 400 years. So we all know what we went through as a people. We all understand and, and, and comprehend exactly, you know, what we had to uh, bear as a, a, a people within the science. And that is the, 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 the judgment that came you know what I mean, as such. And when I say judgment, not on us as a people, you know. You know, sometimes you, something bad happens to you, say, man, judgment. But it's not as if it's a judgment. It's a wicked, evil um, uh, community that came upon us. I hear people like to talk about and pushing their point about Africans, sell Africans into slavery, you know, and that disgusts me. I'm going to tell you why. Because most people that you hear run that talk, they can't prove it. Even if something was so, people just repeat that as if they're trying to find some space in their heart. Oh, we were double kidnapped. Double kidnap what? A wicked set of people came into our land. Listen, if you check the Battle of Adawa, check the Battle of Adawa. At the Battle of Adawa, you had different factions in a man. They were, they were, they were warring tribes in Ethiopia. Nobody's denying that. But when Crispy came in, that's the Italian generals, all the Ethiopians said, hey, listen, let's forget about the fighting for now. We going to come together and we join in Menelik II. The same thing when Mussolini came into Ethiopia in 1935. Yes, we had differences amongst our own selves and, 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 and different religious outlooks. It is the truth. But when the enemy step in and say he trying to get us, we didn't say, boy, now is our chance to kidnap him and send him to him. None of us did that. And that's history we can pull out. You know, so whatever history you have, and I always tell people, don't say that Africans had slaves. You got to be careful. What, what, is, what is slavery? Let me tell you clearly. If what we went through 
at the hands of the Europeans on them ships and on them plantations, if that is what you call slavery, you cannot use that same term and equate that with other levels of serfdom and servitude. It's just like how the Jews um, um, have the monopoly, it seems like, on the word Holocaust, because as far as they see, you can't take up that word and just put that to some sort of merry-go-round and think you can call that the Holocaust too. So my point is that the so-called slavery was so terrible, so destructive to the physical and the mentality that it has lasted for generations upon generations up to now, it's still in our memory bank. We did nothing like that in Africa. If we, if we had a problem with a warring tribe, and we caught prisoners as prisoners of war, these prisoners were treated like royalty. Here in a man, even in Ethiopia, the prisoners were kept in fetters of gold. Just think about that. And after you spent your time, you were able to buy land and even marry into certain families. What kind of slavery is that? But some of us, we so ready to, 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 to make, make, make the, the slave master feel good. Oh, well, Africans sold Africans into slavery. Anybody that talk like that, eh? You don't go, don't sleep in the same room with them, my brother. Them is people that will take your life out because they're finding, they're just searching in the dark for some reason, you know what I mean, to deny that a demon came into our household and kidnapped and raped us. I ain't got no time with no magnifying glasses. Oh, look, 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 here's a bit of history on some little parchment paper. And if you, if you look good under the microscope, we have a name of somebody that was kidnapped from some tribe. Don't give me none of that. Millions of us came over here, brother. Millions of us. Don't try to pretend you're Inspector Gadget. We were kidnapped by a wicked being, and that's it. That's how I see it, and I'm not pussyfooting around it. I hate to hear people talking about how Africans sold Africans into slavery. We need to stop that. So anyway, what I'm really saying here now, as we get into the fullness of, of Marcus, Messiah, Gavi, and I'm um, sharing um, something else with you. Just giving you an idea, as you could see, you can see that, I hope, that um, you could see the, the atrocity for those who would not understand, look at the amount of lashes this brother has on his back. Listen, these people would take a pregnant woman eh, and tie one leg to a horse and tie another leg to another horse and beat the horse on his behind and have the horse ripping the woman apart. And they would do that purposely in front of the whole community. And there was a reason for this. This was to instill fear into us as a people, fear that would last throughout generations upon generations. We have the Willie Lynch letters here. I didn't, I didn't plan to read it, but the Willie Lynch letters, and I know a lot of people would be saying, oh, Willie Lynch didn't exist. This is another thing. Willie Lynch had a plantation right here in Antigua. I can bring the historians to talk to you. They have a place here they call Willie Keys, right here in Antigua. You know what I mean? Willow be back. So, so I know the history and it's written in stone here. And this Mr. Willie Lynch had the blueprint of how to divide us as a people, divide the short from the tall, divide the dark from the, uh, the light, divide the he from the she, divide the them from the us, all sorts of things he figured out to, to divide us and conquer us. So that was a part of the mental training before they brought in the educational system and don't trust no Quakers. I don't care which part on the Underground Railroad that they worked. You have to understand it. Eh? This is a well-oiled system. It's like a theater. It's like politics, you know, just before us. So basically, the enslavement now brought us to a state that even when they took off the shackles and the chains, as they say, we were still in a sort of frame of mind where, where we were now um, totally um, a servant to the master. We didn't just have the master's name. We didn't just have the master's language. But now we just somehow picked up the master's um, um, language, ways, name, everything. Because remember, eh, when they would rip the woman apart, and when they would hang and beat the brother, they would kill your father in front of you. 
and your mother would look at you as a young child and tell you, now you see what they did to your puppy? I don't want them to do that to you. So why did they do that to puppy? Because puppy did not want to accept that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. Straight up, you can't tell me that we as black people sat down and say, hey, that, that's some good preaching there, man. That Jesus thing that the slave master, our killer and murderer is talking about, sounds like some good stuff. Nothing goes up. We were forced to spit out Uncle Unkulu and forget about that. Don't come with no Orisha, no laws around here. Jesus Christ, the Virgin Mary, and the Holy Ghost. And if you don't want that, we hang you up alive. And we hang you up in front of your whole family so the family can go home and contemplate that one. Because tomorrow, Friar Tuck coming and knocking on the door. Jesus for anybody? So you better be ready with the right answer. And that has come down through the generations, along with some other stuff that we hold on now and we would fight to the death to defend them kind of things. That's the reality. So I'm saying all of this now, basically to paint a picture or to kind of create a foundation. That is the state of mind that Marcus Messiah Gavi met us in. Because now you have to understand that we have many heroes, eh? that even came before Marcus Garvey. You, you know, in, in the Caribbean, in Antigua, you could talk about uh, King Court, also known as Prince Class. He, he was an individual who led a rebellion, you know, and to, to destroy government house, which is the house that represents the queen. That's where the governor of the British colonial empire would live him and his family his wife and his children and they were having a big ball and the plan was to put explosives on the government house and send it sky high you understand but you don't know how it always goes. there's always a snitch there's always a sellout there's always a spy spies sellouts and snitches trust me when you come across them people you got to run a winnie mandela on them i i don't I, i'm not ashamed or afraid to say that because they're gonna kill all of us it's best you take one out you know what i mean and and then what you're gonna save a snitch and a spy idi i mean don't play with them things eh? take them out quick because they're gonna look what happened is 88 people get hanged and broken at the wheel because the plot was foiled 88 as they call them conspirators of the plot got hanged in a place they call um, otter's pasture not too far from where i am here so you see so people like king court also known as prince class you have of course nanny of the maroons and kojo and these different ones and Macandal and so in haiti you know what i mean so so i'm just showing you you know even in the u.s you have people like uh not turner uh you know you know v denmark vz and these one and even coming up into the modern time when people like w.e. B. Du boys and so rose up and frederick douglas but listen to me my brother only because some of us may be ignorant of the fact. But there was nobody, nobody like Marcus Garvey prior to him from the time they put shackles and chains on us, from the time we were kidnapped to the time Marcus Messiah Garvey stepped on the shores of the United States of America. As I said, in between that, we have a, 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 a you know what I mean, we have a long list of heroes and heroines, but nobody until that time, and I do dare say even since that time, has made an impact my lord on the black world of people like marcus messiah gavi i challenge anybody to tell me who else on that level let's keep in mind 
that it is Marcus Garvey that told us, look to Ethiopia, where a prince shall be crowned king. He shall be your liberator. That's what he said. It is 1928, the 27th day of March in Elwes Park. So I'm saying, and of course, we're speaking of Emperor Haile Selassie the first as Marcus Messiah Garvey with such words. So we are saying here now that Messiah Garvey, in all importance, he was the one that 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 brought forward in, in fullness that concept of Africa for the Africans. Um, w. Blyden would have would have coined the phrase. Marcus Messiah Garvey for sure was the one that made it popular internationally. For when you told us as a people, you are an African, like who? What? African? No, man, I'm from St. Louis. You know what I mean? You are an African. You are from the, 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 the Congo Basin. You are from the Fanti people. You are from the Shanti people. That's how Marcus Messiah Garvey was speaking to us. Eh? But now, Marcus Messiah Garvey wasn't just a talker coming on a soapbox talking. Eh? Marcus Messiah Garvey, up to this day, you know that when in 1920, when they had that massive parade in Harlem, you know, Marcus Messiah Garvey himself, up to now, there has not been a show of power that could be compared to, to even how Marcus Messiah Garvey, even at that time, expressed himself to the people. So what it is now, let me just get some uh, pictures here to show you. Um, bam, bam, bam. Let me see if I'm sharing that properly. Bam. You see that, right? These are some of the soldiers. I hope you've seen it. No worry. I can see if you've seen it. Let me look. Okay, yes, we are seeing it. You are looking at Marcus Messiah Garvey's um, soldiers. Now, what I'm saying, this is what Marcus Messiah Garvey did. We're talking about millions, my brother millions of followers within a few short years that were members of the Universal Negro Improvement Association. And there were millions more across the world that were not official members of the Universal Negro Improvement Association. So when you hear them speak about Marcus Garvey took out our wish, the wish, the chicken wishbone and put in the backbone of a, a real massive and mighty strong black man, this is what was taking place here. You know, Marcus Messiah Garvey himself you know, would take the black man, as you could see, they were now ordained or, or, or they were looking like soldiers. He brought them to a military status, which is really what he was doing. You know, we basically had an army. We had businesses. We had supermarkets. Um, um, Marcus Messiah Garvey brought in the Black Cross nurses as well. You know, Marcus Messiah Garvey even brought the woman to a standard. She herself, you know, became a, 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 a military if you want to say someone to be reckoned with, a, a force to be reckoned with, as you see the military woman here, you understand, rising the banner of the red, black, and green. You know, this is this is the first time coming out of slavery. Nobody can deny this. Nobody can deny this. This is the first time coming out of slavery that the black woman and the black man was in, in, in mass, was given any sort of dignified position for the world to see. That's Marcus Messiah Garvey. You know, I know some may be itching somehow to say Elijah Muhammad. I wonder if you, you recall what date I said. This is 1920. Maybe Elijah Muhammad's mother would have been somewhere here or his father. The same thing can be said for Malcolm X's mother and father as well, and a heap of other people. You know, 1920, there's no Fahad Muhammad until 1930. Now, what I'm saying here, you know, my brother, the reason why I have to say it, so with no disrespect to no one, I feel it to be a, a great disrespect for us as so-called 
conscious people to have all of these narratives that we play with daily and act just like our enemy as if Marcus Garvey didn't exist. It's a shame. Trust me. When we talk and we and we find more uh, um, red, black, and green, RBG, and and act as if you know Marcus Garvey just not around. You know me. You know why? Because we have taken the pill. We have taken the pill. Our 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 wicked enemy is the one that gives us our heroes. So they don't give us Marcus Garvey. They ain't giving you no highly Selassie first, you crazy. So they will give you Martin Luther King. They will give you a watered down version of maybe Malcolm X. And it's no disrespect to Martin Luther King, you know. And definitely no disrespect to Shabazz, for sure. You know what I mean? I, I think that as a, as a mature thinking person, I, I think I could, you know, understand Dr. King's philosophy and could see that, well, I wasn't exactly in line with that. Um, um, I wasn't there. You know, sometimes we like to play armchair generals, but I wasn't there, really. Um, but the, 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 the concepts that himself and others like Mr. John Lewis that just passed on, etc., followed, I don't think I would be on that level at all. For me alone, I, I would be happy not to drink from the same fountain as the enemy. I would be delighted not to eat in their restaurant. Why would I want to eat from them? I mean, with the understanding I have now, why, what, why would I risk my life? to eat from them why would i risk my children's life to be educated by them i mean i again you know you have to be very balanced and understand and 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 sometimes you you have to see the heart of people and their heart might have been in the right place but something was not clicking to me right there and i think it's no disrespect because martin luther king himself clearly showed a different frame of mind very close to the end of his, his life. In fact, the night before the end of his life, you listen to his last speech, you know, that's not a speech that's promoted at all. At all, at all. There's a statue they put up of, of him, I think, in Washington, D.C., with all of his famous quotes. There ain't no quote from that one on there. The last speech, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> when he told you to boycott, boycott, pardon me, Coca-Cola, and boycott one bread and boycott take your money out of the banks and put it in the black credit unions oh no well that's not the martin luther king we want to, to promote at all you know the king they promote we all know it i have a dream you know me black and white holding hands that and he stopped there hold breaks don't say no more that's about it you know what I mean? Just ring that in their ear over and over again. But there's much more to the man. But this is what I'm saying. They give us the heroes they want. And then even though they give us a radical hero or semi-radical or was radical at one time or became radical at the end, whatever you, you, they take, they shape it up. Like a Nelson Mandela, as I said, was radical, whatever. They shape it up. The radical one, you don't even remember that. You just know what they give you and this is the reality and that is what they do for example with marcus garvey so this is why even in jamaica they, they're fighting to get marcus garvey in the school another shame you know marcus messiah garvey arguably the most important black man and definitely the most important black man even in this western world now you know i want to share a few things here again my brother let me just uh you know and, and, and i'm highlighting again how messiah garvey because i'm sharing you using your program eh? so it's a little yeah but i have it i have it how marcus messiah garvey you know the, the black businesses, as I said, the supermarkets. And keeping in mind, eh, when Marcus Garvey was at the heights here, this is the same time when we talk about Black Wall Street, we were talking about 1920. 
and the time and they, there was more than one black wall street there was more than one little africa so marcus messiah Garvey was like a little africa within his own self you know just just like any of these communities even more so than them marcus Garvey had three ships the black star line already beginning trade even as far as with liberia okay everything that we have said thus far this is a class eh? everything that we have said thus far i hope you capsule it in your mind you know don't be afraid to take notes because we're not just here to talk eh? Baba, every time television is not no entertainment business, and even if it's entertaining, I mean, we might nothing wrong with that, but it's edification. Some say edutainment, but it's edification we're dealing with. Now, my good brother, Baba, every time, this is the Olmec head structure, as you know, because you did put up this, the, the picture, but as you said, you, the, the, where we're going with this one is a little, you know, you're trying to figure it out, so we're going to get there. So... Yes, the Olmec head structure. And the Olmec now, this specific one you're looking at, this was found in Central America. You, you would find the Olmec heads basically in Central America, some parts of South America, even in the Caribbean. The first 11 or 13 that they originally found it's, it has gone beyond that, eh? especially now that we know what to look for. So basically, you can see without a doubt that this head structure here is that of an African. Idi Amin that are looking like. It, it doesn't have nothing. It don't, it don't, whatever you feel of Idi Amin that is not the point. I said looking like you can't run from it the thick lips and i mean the geometry is so precise the finish touch is so precise can you imagine that these archaeologists that discovered this would tell you that the reason why they have these big noses is because the tools were blunt these blunt tools made some very very precise well-formed African nose and lips. It's a black man. Let's not waste time, you know, playing with that. And not just a black man. You could see from the heart of the blackness. And interestingly, he has on his helmet. Now, the Olmec people, also known as the Shai people, X-I, Shai people, they are directly related to the man. At least that's how we relate them to the man. But they're related to the, in the Incas and the Aztecs and the, the mystics and all of the different tribes that you find in Central and South America. Because the Shai people or the Olmec people are the teachers they are the forerunners as such of the civilization that you see today in south and central america i think we all know that this area of the world is rich with a certain culture that has been attributed to the modern day in, um, Indian, what they call Indian people from the area. And it's no disrespect to them. And it's not as if they have not created anything. But if we're not careful, somewhere down the line, we may believe that the people in Egypt today are Kemet, the same people that you see on TV. Because it's not them alone there, but that seems to be what the TV camera picks up. So the Arabs you see in Egypt today, somewhere down the line, if you're not careful, your children, if not them, your children's children will believe that they built it. In fact, that's what people believe today. You put on National Geographic, go and, and watch some documentary in Egypt. And if you see black people in it, well, it must be some documentary by, I don't know, Tariq Nasheed or somebody. 
Because if you watch a documentary and it's about Kemet and it's not um, Arabic people or Arab people, I should say, uh, ethnicity, I should say, uh, replaying or reenacting the, the process in Kemet, well, you found a good documentary, I'm telling you. And they, they find the payless ones too. So I'm saying all that to say they flip the script in of uh, 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 flip the script right in front of our eyes, and it's the same thing here. And it's no disrespect at all to the Caribs, to the Arawaks, to the Tainos. Believe me, there's no disrespect, but it's just a fact that the work, the engineering, and the skills exhibited that was brought forth, my good brother, that built the pyramid of the sun and the pyramid of the moon. It is these people, the Olmec people, which represents now, listen to this, the Quetzalcoatl, we're stepping up here, the feathered snake. Now, before we go too far, I think that it is obvious that the Olmec head structure looks very similar to the face of the mighty prophet Marcus Messiah Garvey. The, the Olmec, pardon me, head structure represents Messiah Garvey. Now, if you look at Marcus Garvey, you see the face of Marcus Garvey. In the same way, when you look at the Olmec, you also see a similar outlook as well. So the Olmec now, again, the science of the Olmec is that the Olmec is considered, please listen to me good, the Olmec is considered the forerunner. The, the, the forerunner of a Messiah that would come. Some people try to interpret it as the bearded white man. But anyway, we're not going too deep into that. But just let me highlight that they are considered the forerunner. Just keep all of that in mind. Now, what I'm going to do, I want to highlight for the people the science known as the feathered snake. And that is very important because that is something that is highlighted all throughout the ancient world. Just looking at Marcus Garvey again, this is one of the key points. It's obvious, there's no denial that Marcus Garvey and the Olmec look alike. I think that is clear. I don't think nobody can run from that. You don't need to see no, no, um, no, uh, what you call it, primary source. That's the primary source there. Look at the statue and look at his face, you know. But what we're going to do from here on, we're going to show you facts that connect Marcus Garvey to the Olmec. And when you see the facts coming, then you reminisce on the fact that they do look alike. Everything will just sink in and you will go to bed tonight saying, yeah, Marcus Garvey is the Olmec for real. You see. Now, the science of the feathered snake is this. And um, what I'm going to do here, my brother, just um, tiger with me for a second uh, to your audience. Don't worry. I know Daddy kills. I've been in radio for a while, but you know when you're multitasking. Blah, 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 blah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We jumped out. We back. Yeah, we jumped out. We blocked out. We blacked out for a minute, but we back. Okay. Wow. I'm sorry about that. I wonder what happened there. Uh, what was what was the last thing I touched upon? Um, the Olmec, the Olmec uh, structure, and Marcus Garvey, the identical structure. The, yeah. two, uh, the same people. Yeah, that's the same people. And then they went out. Basically, went out. Okay, okay. That, that, that. doesn't sound that far ahead. All right. So many things, my brother. What are you looking at here? I hope we don't go out again. You are looking at. Okay, you see the sun and the wings. Now the sun with the wings represents, again, the feathered snake. The feathered snake is an ancient concept. The feathered snake 
or the flying serpent, listen good, according to those that would have used it, would see that the person that is represented by this feathered snake is the, the manifestation of what we would call God. I'm, I'm, I'm taking my time for a specific reason so we don't get lost in words and, oh God, I don't believe in God, I don't want to, this and that. Now, the feathered snake, this science here, is the cycle of the sun, specifically the 11-year sunspot cycle. This is a documentary that I did, my good brother, two years ago. This is entitled The Night of the Black Tiger. This is this is a, a, a the third documentary in a series of documentaries. There are three video full-length documentaries that we produced, and this is one of them. This is the Night of the Black Tiger, and this goes into the divinity of Marcus Messiah Garvey. So you will see the pictures going across. It's not necessarily a slideshow. You're not going to hear the audio. I'll be explaining to you what I'm showing you, but I'm just letting you know what you are watching. In fact, depending on how much time we have, somewhere down the line in this program, I want to play just a small bit of this documentary, and you will hear it um, as I highlight other aspects of Marcus Messiah Garvey. Okay, I think I feel like we just began. Eh? So, as I said, now as that kind of gets itself loaded up, with the, 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 the science of this feathered snake, it's the science of the sun. And the sun, as we know, is not just a ball of fire. In fact, the sun is electromagnetic energy. Outside of the helium and the hydrogen is electricity that you're dealing with when it comes to the sun. Now, basically, the sun rotates. The sun rotates. When we say the sun rotates now, the sun itself has an electromagnetic field line for its equator. This is it. It's known as the equator electromagnetic field line. Good. Then you also have the polar electromagnetic field line. Now, the polar electromagnetic field line, that means it's a field line of electricity, electromagnetic energy. You get that? That is running from the poles of the sun. You have positive and negative poles of the sun, not, neg not necessarily north and south. Please follow me good. So here you have, they do have N and S, but it's not necessarily that. Any astronomer will show you it's not no north pole and south pole. It's positive and negative. Good. We saw a custom that north is up and south is down, and so, so that's where it comes in. So really, the equator electromagnetic field line, which is this, actually rotates once every 26 Earth days. So when 26 days have passed on planet Earth, you could, you could bet your bottom dollar that the electromagnetic field line of the sun has rotated once. Now, the electromagnetic um, field line of the poles would rotate once every 37 days. Every 37 days, the electromagnetic field line of the poles rotate once. You follow that? So that means this is not like planet Earth. The sun just like almost like Jupiter and Saturn are gas giants. So it's not a solid thing just going around like a ball. So obviously you could see that the electromagnetic field line of the equator has a different pace to that of that that is related to the poles. Now, as it goes around, and I know people might be saying, what does this have to do with Marcus Garvey? And this is our problem. We're too shallow, very shallow. Marcus Messiah Garvey himself show us that it is in religion and science that you will have the ability to overcome the, the, uh, the wickedness of this modern day time, I'm paraphrasing, but I know for sure it's in religion and science. Marcus Messiah Garvey talk about calculus and, and how we took the, 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 we brought down the, the stars to minute and regular calculus. That's what we did. 
So when we talking about this and busting it down to Marcus Garvey, don't be afraid, don't run away. It's Marcus Garvey we talking about. So the polar, as you could see here, because the equator electromagnetic field line is rotating faster than the polar, polar, pardon me, ele electromagnetic field line. Every 87.5 days, the, the electromagnetic field line of the equator actually runs into the polar electromagnetic field line and gives it a tug. Every 87.5 days, it bam, hits it again and just keep giving it a tug until it becomes so encoiled and so um, entangled. Because remember, this is taking place underneath the surface of the sun. So as that is taking place underneath the surface of the sun, what happens when, when it gets so encoiled and, and, and tangled that it cannot take it anymore? You get the solar maximum, you, you see the electromagnetic field line and the, all the energy busting out from underneath the surface of the sun. And that creates something that is known as uh, sunspots. Now, that is obviously science. You know, they, they used to it again coming out from underneath the surface of the sun, the magnetic field. This is obviously science. This is not a complete thing. This is something that NASA and, and, and those who examine the heavens would have just discovered not too long ago. But what I'm showing to the audience here now is that understanding the science of the sun is something that we had within our arsenal from the ancient times. I just explained now that we had a science known as the feathered snake, the snake with wings. And the snake with wings was not just a snake flying around. If you notice the medical system, the medical symbol that you have, which is the double snake with the wings, the caduce as they call it, that's the same feathered snake. But the feathered snake represented a human being and it also represented the cycle of the sun, the sunspot cycle. It represented these two things. So this is why there were certain human beings that were considered feathered snake. For example, Tutankhamun. This is why you see Tutankhamun, I will get to that soon, with the bird and the snake. Look at Akhenaten. Look at Amenhotep III. Look at Ramses. Look at Khufu. Look at all of them, and you'll see that they only may carry the snake, maybe in Nubia, I think um, the kings and maybe the queens, they may carry the double falcon or the double bird. But the snake and the bird together is unique to Tutankhamun. And in all fairness, there is a statue, a relief of the third with a bird and a snake, but even archaeologists you know, because of the history, they would say, you know, he, he kind of tried to put himself in that position, understanding the science of it. But it's for sure that I think we can agree that Tutankhamun is genuine as it relates to this feather snake. But anyway, look at this. What you're looking at here, this is a computer um, rendition of the cycle of the sun. Am I still with you every time, Pa? Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You teach your heart. Okay, no, 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 no. I just want to make sure this is not going out in the way. So, um, yeah, when you look at the, the, this is the sunspot cycle, looking at the sunspot cycle and how, you know, uh, maximum 400 years of sunspot observation. But even when you just look at an 11-year version of it, you get this similar outlook like it looks like a, a, a snake with feathers sticking out. Now, some people say, well, you know, maybe that's what you see or maybe that's what you want to see. But remember, we have been carving the snake. Look at this as well, more tighter. But remember now, we have been carving the snake with wings. This is what catches me. And, uh, you know, we can't overlook this. We have been carving, and this is just an artist's rendition of a cave painting, um, cave carving. Listen to me, my people. We are highly scientific people, eh? 
We are highly scientific people. You cannot tell me the Dogans without a telescope can see Sirius B, um, Protolo and Sigitolo, and understand we're dealing with a binary system. I hear some people say it could be uh, um, three stars, but let's just deal with what we, we confirm for the time. Sirius A and Sirius B. The point is that you need some powerful electromagnetic telescope to see that. And maybe the telescope can't even see it from here. You got to send it out there and then take a better look. But we, primitive people, uncivilized, yeah, we could spot that to the point where we could create a dance and show you in motion and movement how the star is performing its movement every 60 years. So when you see us have the ability to carve a snake, watch it, the man, carve a snake with wings that is so similar to the 11-year sunspot cycle, the sunspot cycle in general, when seen in a computer graph, which is a modern thing. Remember in Abydos, you know, we already have the, the Tomahawk helicopter. I'm sure some of the people in your audience know this. We have the war tank. We have the, 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 the hovercraft. We already carved this at least 3,000 years ago. So we already had a, a certain level. We have the carving with the bulb and the fil fil filament. I think it's in the same temple. So we have that science existing so long ago. So for you now in this modern time, to be able to, 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 to track the cycle of the sun, and yes, it looks like the snake with wings, but we already had that on the wall. And listen to the powers here. We were saying that this represent the cycle of the sun and this represent the son of God. S-U-N-S-O-N. Snake. S-U-N-S-O-N. And listen, this is why even in the Bible, remember Christ himself. Look at the snake head snake body. 21st day of March. This is one of the temples, the Old McBell. Pyramid of the Temple of the Sun, Pyramid of the Temple of the Moon. And at a certain time of the year, the, 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 the equinox, the sun, perfectly aligned on the equator of the heavens, the celestial equator, it gives you this impression of a snake coming down, which will hit the head down here. There's the head of the snake right here at the bottom of the temple. And the body comes out in the shadow on that day of the year. The, the, the temple set up by the Olmec, the feathered snake, you understand? So we already, we had high a high level of science. Look at this now. This is um, the ancient, in ancient Kemet. You see this, the snake with the wings again. In the book of um, book of Malachi, it speaks about that, that, that you know, the, the son of righteousness shall arise, capital S-U-N, eh? not S-O-N. Capital S-U-N, the book of Malachi, and the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in its wings. Now, the son, capital S, that means it's, it's a, what would you call it, a personal pronoun. And this son has wings. Now, that's what I mean. Think within yourself. Where in history, mythology, culture, science, you can relate the sun flying, having wings? It must be the same concept of the snake with wings, because the snake with wings represents the cycle of the sun. So in the Bible talking about the sun with wings, it's got to be talking about that. And look, we have it here on the temple, the snake with the wings and the sun in the middle. And this sun, capital S, is a human being. It's not the ball in the sky. You know, this is what we saw, that a human being will come. This is where all the Christ thing and everything get mixed up and Messiah and, and, and Mashdik and, and Jesus and all sorts of things, you know, because our science said that there will be an individual and individuals that would appear at specific time on the planet who are carrying that high frequency of the science of the cycle of the sun. Tut Ankh. Aman is one of these individuals. That's why Tut Ank Aman is seen, as I said, with the, the snake and, and um, the bird on his, his temple or on his, his uh, mitre. Good. Now, 
in the Yucatan Peninsula. This is obviously again in Central America. You see the beloved Marcus Garvey. You see that Marcus Garvey is the Almec. See Marcus the Almec, Marcus the Almec. Good. Now, this is the mask of Lord Packer. Please hold with me. This is, as I said, this is the Night of the Black Tiger. This is a documentary that we did. It's um, one hour, 12 minutes long. Just giving you some clips within it. And I must say that this is an e-documentary too, but um, every time let me just let them know this is a documentary that they can purchase. This is a well put together, full length documentary. It's one in our three major full length, full -length documentary. We have a documentary entitled The Master of Ceremonies that goes into the divinity of Emperor Haile Selassie I. I think next time I come around this way, my brother, we got to talk about Emperor Haile Selassie I. So yeah, the master of ceremony, that is our first, mm -hmm, our first official full-length documentary that goes into the divinity of Emperor Haile Selassie I. And then we have the documentary entitled Seven. Uh, packed with information. I'm, I'm not afraid to say that, which goes into the divinity of an individual by the name of the Honorable King Emmanuel Charles Edwards. And uh, the third full length documentary, which is this, that you are somewhat getting a little sneak preview of, in a sense, which is The Night of the Black Tiger, which is the divinity of Marcus Messiah Garvey. At the end of the program, I'll give you some more information on how you could get a copy of these documentaries if you desire. So, this is the mask of Lord Packer. Now, Lord Packer would have um, reigned around 780 in the Yucatan Peninsula. That's in Central America. Lord Packer, interestingly, came to... Now, listen to these facts. Lord Packer came to the throne at the age of nine. Now, I mentioned to Anchorman earlier, he also, as many of you know, came to the throne at the age of nine. And to Anchorman was at least 2,000 years apart from Lord Packer. Tutankhamun was like 1300 BC, Lord Packer around 780. We got about 2,000 years distance from each other. And that's interesting, you know, because every 2,000 years is a new age. Just balance the science. So Lord Packer was considered to be a feathered snake. That is seen because in his burial chamber, in his carvings, writings, and all of that, he's seen as the, the snake with wings. And we just explained the science of the snake with wings. Unless somebody's just joining us, well, I know you have the ability to go back and watch it again from the top. But trust me, if you're just joining us, you need to get the rest of this before. Because now this is Lord Packer's mask. His temple alone was filled with the science of the cycle of the sun. Um, I think he had 26 steps going up, 37 steps, his chain around his neck. All of these things had the numbers that related to the science of the cycle of the sun that we just explained. But we can't go into all of that right now. You get more of that in this documentary, The Night of the Black Tiger, and especially the documentary 7, where we basically go deeper into this. So as you look at the mask, you would notice that it's made from bits and pieces of jade, which is a very important stone to the man. One thing you have to observe is that there's a jade bead that looks like an eye, but it's a jade bead in the mouth of Lord Packer, in the mask at least. You notice that the mask has certain dots above and underneath the eye, the point is that when you take, listen to this good, when you take a picture of this mask, which is what you have here, this is a picture of the mask, and you make a photocopy, a, a, a transparent mirror copy of the mask, get me good? So you take this picture, you carry it to the stationery, and you say, I would like to photocopy this mask on transparent paper. I don't know, but it's done. So you can look through the paper and you look at the real picture. 
you take the paper and you turn it around. So you get in a mirror version. You know what's a mirror version? You look in the mirror and you raise your left hand. It appears as if your mirror is raising or your reflection is raising its right hand. So you get a mirror version of this mask. And what you do, the dots, like this dot here, this dot here, I think there's one under here, one up here. Um, also, the nose is used for pivot point. When you align the dots and do different things with the mask, you do it for yourself. Take the picture, find the picture. You could download it on the internet if you find the picture. Get a uh, mirror photocopy of the picture. Do it your own self. You'll see. And turn it back way. Well, it's the mirror photocopy. And align the dots that are in the mask. And different pictures will appear. For example, this. This is a snake. With wings. In fact, you can look, this is the artist's rendition of it. The snake with wings. Keep in mind, eh? you can even look at the mask and see. For example, look at the nose. That's one of the wings. See it here? The nose was used as the pivot point. See one wing, one wing. But the point I'm making is, look at all these pieces of jade bead. Beads, pardon me. I mean, you have hundreds of pieces of beads. Um, stone, pardon me stone jade stone and they put them together stick them and create a mask and use a bead for this eye one for this eye one in the mouth put some dots here and there these little pieces they didn't have no photocopying machine in that day how did they know the, the mask didn't come with instructions how did they know that if you photocopy this and have a transparent picture of it and turn it around and align the dots, you will get a picture with a snake with wings. How did they know that? Because they were highly scientific beings. They were not aliens. They were highly scientific beings. These are the same people that unraveled the mystery of the feathered snake and understood the science of the cycle of the sun. That is why now they could put within the mask, obviously very mysteriously, the snake with the wings. This is what Masons and Freemasons drool off of. The science that they be talking about with their rose and their cross is baby compared to this. And this is just a mask. This is not even the Pyramid of Giza. This is a mask. See there? Snake with wings. Okay. Now, when you, you can see the two faces here. That's it. You take it and you align. Look at the dots that you align. What you get here? You get what looks like a bat. And the bat now has the bead in its mouth. Now remember, the, the owner of the mask, which is Lord Packer, had the bead in its mouth. So the science is that the bat with the bead in his mouth, the man that wear the mask is the symbol of the bat. The Olmec symbol is the bat. Please follow me. The Olmec symbol, remember the Olmec look like Marcus Garvey, eh? so we on point. We still on the subject. We don't go nowhere. The Olmec symbol is the bat. So he that wear the mask, who is an Olmec too, which is also a feathered snake. Remember, it's the mask telling us this. This is not a book. Don't ask me what language is written in. This is what you call understanding esoteric science. So the bat with the bead in his mouth is the man that have on the mask. Okay. Now, so where we are thus far, what we are looking at here, we're seeing that when you understand, just uh, making that catch itself there for a moment, when you understand what we have here, Marcus Messiah Garvey, in fact, let me just stop sharing it. Good. Marcus Messiah Garvey now, as I said, one of the main things we have to keep in mind that Marcus Messiah Garvey represents the Almec. That is for sure. I think we already covered that. And the thing with the bat now, please follow this. The bat is considered 
to be the animal equivalent to an obese. The bat is the animal equivalent to an obese. Let me just show you an obese here. Mm -hmm. Bam. Bam, 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 bam. Are you seeing this? Good. A lot of work. Okay? <laughs> the animal equivalent to Anubis. Now, Anubis is considered to be ooh, the resurrector. Pardon me. Anubis is the one that brings the dead to life. Now, how does Anubis or Anpu bring the dead to life? Anpu or Anubis wraps the dead in the mantle and brings them to life. Let me just stick here for a moment. We know the story of Osiris and Asa. I know I'm saying a lot, but just trust me, everything is going to fit into place. We know the story of Aset and Asa and Aset and Set come and chop him up into 14 or 16 pieces, throw him in the coffin, the 72 conspirators, um, Tahuti enters the picture, the scribe, Isis finds the pieces of the body, the phallic not found, and she brings him, put him together, and Anpu, which is Anubis, wraps him around and brings him to life. That's Osiris. You, you see the pictures of Anubis. I didn't have one of that um, ready, but we all know it. Anubis, the mummy fire, wraps up the, the dead Osiris and brings him to life. Now, Marcus Messiah Garvey, in his famous speech, would say, I'm sure we've all heard it, when I die, this is Marcus Garvey's words, when I die, wrap me, let me start a little more from uh, a little earlier up. He said, if I die in Atlanta, my work would have only just begun. Whether I live in the physical or spiritual, I will to see the day of African Africa's glory. When I die, wrap me in the mantle of the red, the black, and the green, for in the new life I shall rise up first with God's grace and blessings to lead you in the, 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 the fight that you know well. Then he goes on, look for me all around, look for me in the whirlwind and the thunderstorm and all of that. But the point I'm saying is that Marcus Garvey says, when I die, wrap me in the mantle of the red, the black, and the green, because in the new life I shall rise. You see, so Marcus Garvey is a science man. So he's telling you that when he dies, He's giving you mummification uh, um, instructions. Anpu takes the dead body and Anpu or Anubis wraps the dead body in a mantle, which is there, there to take them safely through the underworld. Didn't Osiris resurrect? To take them through the underworld so that they could resurrect properly. Listen to this good man, because Marcus Messiah Garvey is the same science here. That is why we already showed you that Anpu or Anubis is the equivalent to the main bat. Anpu or Anubis is the equivalent to the main bat. The main bat is the symbol of the Olmec. The bat is the animal symbol of the Olmec. The Lord Pakal mask, which is a mask of an individual which his own people says he's a feathered snake. That's what they said. And when you take his mask and decode his mask, which came with no instructions, you do see a bat with a bead in his mouth, just like the mask had a bead in his mouth. It's the same person. You also see the snake with the wings, which represents the feathered snake. All of this is seen in the mask of Lord Packer. 
and the bat is the symbol, the, the animal symbol that is equivalent to Anubis in Kemet. And we already showed you that Marcus Garvey is the Almec. And we are showing you now that Anpu, just like Marcus Garvey, that science, as Marcus Garvey said, when I die, wrap me in that mantle, red, black, and green, because in the new life, I shall rise. And what is interesting here is that Anpu is also a forerunner. Just like Gavi is considered a forerunner. Now, when you look at the mask again, please bear with me. Tiger with me. Just hold tight, man. When go make some tea and come again. No, no, don't go make nothing. No, no, no. Change my mind. Don't move. When you look at the mask again and you do another rendition now look at this you see three faces here now i don't want to understand you see a lot of other things but we can't stay on this forever trust me you see plenty of things but we can't stay but what is outstanding here is there's the face of a young boy and the young boy has on a great hat with feathers. The feathered hat represents the feathered snake. This picture here is Lord Packal. This one here is the same owner of the mask. Lord Packal. I'm just going to be going swift now. Hope you're keeping your notes. And in front of the mouth of Lord Packal. And how you know it's Lord Packal? Because he has the, the earrings that are symbolic to Lord Packal. Very key. And in front of his mouth is the Buddha the squatting buddha so you see it here see the buddha right here the squatting buddha in front of his mouth this is lord packal himself as you can see he has his earrings here that's symbolic of him and then this young boy you can look in the young boy's eyes you can see the face of a young boy with the feathered hat okay we can't stay too long we're just going to break it down fast tut anchorman is the young boy bam tut anchorman is the young boy now, one of the reasons we can be sure about this, there is a link. As we said, Lord Packer came to the throne at the age of what? At the age of nine. Tutankhamun came to the throne at the age of what? At the age of nine. Lord Packer is a feathered snake. And that was proven even in the mass, showing you that, yeah, this is the man with the science of the sun. Look, Uncle Man, there you see the snake. There you see the bird, the vulture, and the snake, and the cobra. Tut Man represents the science of the circle, the cycle of the sun. Remember, eh? when they discovered Tut Man in 1923, 23 or 24, 1923, uh, 5th of November, Lord Carnivon, Lord Carnivon, he's the individual that sponsored the digging up of Tutankhamun's tomb. The very moment, the very moment they opened the necropolis, the tomb of Tutankhamun, which had the most illustrious um, um, artifacts that they ever found up to now. When they opened his tomb, at the very same time in, e in London, Lord Carnivon's, um, he had pets, and his canary was eaten by a cobra. So apparently the cobra got out of its cage and got into the canary's cage and ate the canary. A snake ate a bird. His snake, the man that discovered the two. Not Howard Carter, the archaeologist. Lord Carnivon, who was the sponsor, he was the one that sponsored it. He specifically had animals and the moment that he discovered the tomb or opened the tomb, his snake, his cobra, ate his bird. And that is just an omen of so many things that happened after that, that if you study that story, you would know for sure that he died and almost everybody that came in contact with that tomb died. But that's the next story for another time. But the point is, this is the feathered snake. Both of them came to the throne at the age of nine, and they both uh, fed a snake. Now listen to this. There you see the Buddha. Tut Ankaman, right? Tut Ankaman's wet nurse. Her name was Maya. 
M-A-Y-A, Maya. That's the name of Tutankhamun's wet nurse. Because, you know, it's it's a bit up and down who his mother was. Even his father, some say Akhenaten. But Tutankhamun's wet nurse name was Maya. Interestingly, at the death of Tutankhamun, the, the person that designed his burial chamber, his name was Maya too, M-A-Y-A. Now, the Buddha, as you can see, the Buddha is here too. The Buddha, Tutankhamun, the Buddha's mother. Her name is Maya, Maya Diva. So you have Maya, the Buddha, and you have Tutankhamun, Maya again. And Lord Pakal now, as you could see, he is the king of the Mayan people, M-A-Y-A, again. So these three individuals, two of which we have already highlighted as Feather Snake, and of course the Buddha, that's a nuts level altogether. These three have a specific link with each other. Maya. And the three of them are feathered snakes. This is very important. All right. Now, if you look at the mask again, see the mask. If you take this same rendition here and just turn it upside down, you're going to get a specific picture we're almost there don't worry this picture look at it good this is the same mask huh? this is the same that mask the same rendition of the mask i just showed you lord Pakal, the buddha and the tutankhamun this is a next um, um, rendition in fact this is what i just showed you upside down please follow me now lord Pakal has been replaced look good by a future looking olmec and this olmec has a helmet on his head the buddha is gone and the buddha is replaced by a man with locks and beard and if you notice in the middle of the the, the olmec's helmet there's what is appears to be an ancient looking man now, that's, that's a subject by itself. I'm not going to dig that deep. I just want to highlight that the three figures have been replaced by three other figures. Fair enough. Now, one of these figures, who is what I want to highlight, and as I said, we have three documentaries. That's almost, I think, we're going at at least five to six hours worth of knowledge and information on similar subjects. We have three documentaries, one of which entitled Seven, the Divinity of King Emmanuel, Charles Edwards, where we take time to really break down this. We, we break it down in the Night of the Black Tiger too, but because it was done in seven, we kind of just summarize it here. But basically, there are three figures here. And this figure, which is the Olmec, look at him good. That's one eye. That's the other eye. And this is the helmet here. Look at the helmet good. And look at the helmet good. You see the helmet here? Look at the eyes. Bam. That's the same Olmec figure in the mask. Look at all these things this one little mask doing it. Who put this mask here together? This must have been a genius. Who? Einstein. Come on. Come better than that. This has to be a super beat. This ain't no EMC squared. Enough. This is some serious stuff. And look here. The Buddha is gone. Because this is a future, this is the future here. The Buddha is gone, and the Buddha is replaced by this man, which this is locks, long hair, and he has beard, and, and, and we're sure because there are other artifacts that prove this. So, the Olmec here, the future Olmec with the helmet. I am saying that this future Olmec here represents Marcos Messiah. Gavi. And this is why I highlighted before that Messiah Gavi himself, as a forerunner, would have come before Haile Selassie and would have highlighted that Haile Selassie the first, even before you know him being crowned Haile Selassie would have shown that Marcus Messiah Garvey would have shown that a prince shall be crowned in Africa. And this prince that shall be crowned in Africa 
he shall be your liberator. Now, this is the whole science of the forerunner now. The John the Baptist in the Bible, it talks about John the Baptist and John the Baptist being the individual that came before Christ. And John the Baptist was the one, the forerunner, that said that look to the east again for the coming of you know the, the, the Son of God. Now, I know I've said a lot, eh? I'm not set of lot, but what I'm trying to highlight to you is that Marcus Garvey is a cosmic being. Just try to delve into everything we have said thus far. Marcus Garvey is more than what meets the eye. So this is why it's very necessary to try to, you know what I mean, push him away from us. I'm not going to stay too long, eh? but listen, I have... I want to present this to you, um, brother. Every time I'm going to play the video, I tell you I'm going to play now. Well, not play, we don't play. I'm going to present the video <laughs> that I said I'm going to present now. This is just a yes, my brother. This is just a snippet of the night of the black tiger. Um, I might put my mic on mute, but anyway, let's see what happens. Um, if, if you get any feedback, tell me and I'll put the mic on mute. But this might just be seven minutes. What I'm going to highlight here, family, the, there is a, a, a god in the main tradition known as Hurakan. And Hurakan, and god, you know, lack like of a better term. Hurakan is where you get the modern day term hurricane. Now, Marcus Messiah Gavi says, that speaking about the same die if he dies in atlanta and when he dies and all of that if death has power counting me to be the real marcus messiah garvey that i want to be if i return in the world winning an earthquake and a thunderstorm all of that no it's august now when you see the 17th of august come in the next few days I'm sure you're going to have some tough hurricane and the sea coming them way are licking up somebody. Every year around Marcus Garvey Earth Day or the day, you are sure to see some level of catastrophe take place. Now, we have chronicled that in this documentary known as The Night of the Black Tiger. And um, just give me a few minutes, take this in. And um, yes, tell me what you think. And as I said, if by any chance you are getting. Okay. Look for me in the world when I look up. Look for me all around you for a top grade. I just come back with countless men, black men and women who have died in America. Those who have died in the West Indies. Priest, the sound must go out when you mute your mic. Say that again, brother. Say that again, brother. Your, your sound must go out when you when you mute your mic. The sound when I, it was perfect oh. for about the first ten seconds. So, so yeah, don't don't oh. mute your mic. Okay, so, all right. Okay. Don't mute your mic. Okay, all right. Okay. Yeah. 
in general, in general, excellent, excellent. It was eight, it was three, seven, three, seven. But not the exact dance was more, it was more. Yeah, about his time, about his time. That time, time. Hurricane, hurricane, earth, earth. Typhoon, typhoon, from the star, the even the that It is from is it was the 17th of August 1955 Hurricane Diana following Hurricane Connie floods Connecticut River killing 190 people 1.8 billion dollars in damage in 1969 Hurricane Camille strikes the U.S. coast kills 259 people. This is specifically in Alabama, the 17th of August. 17th of August, 1959, a 7.1 week strikes Yellowstone Park, United States of America. On the same date, the birthday of Marcus Garvey, 1976, an earthquake and tsunami hits the Philippines. Over 8,000 people died. In 1915, Galveston, Texas, a hurricane strikes, killing 275. 1951, hurricane winds drives six ships ashore in Kingston, Jamaica, the island where Messiah God was born. 1983, Hurricane Elisa kills 17 in Texas. 1999, 7.4 magnitude earthquake strikes Turkey. 17,000 die, 44,000 injured, all on the 17th of August. The sinking of the currents, the Russian ship in 2000. And in 1979, two Russian passenger planes off the Ukraine, 173 died. And as we are not glorifying in the death of anyone, we just highlighted that all this took place on the 17th of August. Keep the date in mind. Even as the final touches are going into this documentary, there's earthquake in Trinidad, there's earthquake in Venezuela, the monsoons flooding in India, and terrible shaking, quaking, and lives lost in Indonesia, 2018. These latter events just mentioned surround the energy of the day of the 17th of August. In 2017, 17th day of August, a terrible hurricane by the name of Harvey appeared. It is over obvious that Harvey is Garvey on the 17th day. And before Harvey, little known at the time, touched Barbados, there was a quake in Barbados prior to his visitation. When Harvey touched the United States, it made landfall in Corpus Christi. Corpus Christi means the body of Christ. All right, my brother, I won't give you no more than that. Um, that's just, um, as I said, as I said, yeah, that was just, uh, yeah, that was just, uh, that was just a little bit. I don't want to, do it. But, but that's the document. But that's the document. I hear myself. I hear myself. 
I don't know why, but I'm hearing my play on um, double voice. Hearing myself, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I'm saying now? Yeah, yeah. You a little bit muffled, priest. Yeah, I don't know. I'm hearing myself. Yeah, I don't know. I'm hearing voice. myself. Right, you hear that? I'm, I'm, yeah, you hear I'm that? Um, echo, echo, echo. I don't know, maybe if I mute it on my side, but it shouldn't be because we're working good all the time. Good all the time. Good all the time. So I'm not too sure what is actually taking place. All right, anyway. So basically, you know, at least for the audience, um, I don't want to overpack what I'm saying here. But I think, you know, the main idea, what I really want to highlight, let me just share a, bit, a few other things before we get where we're going here. Um, blah, 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 blah. Just tag it with me there. Yeah, your application is slightly different than mine. Are uh, you seeing? Oh, yes, you're seeing it. Okay, I see where you're seeing it. Okay, so basically, this is from an, a, a, a website, historymatters.gmu.edu, and it's talking about the Declaration of the Rights of the Humans People of Human People, Negro Peoples of the World. <laughs> Maybe we are the human people for real. And the principles of the Universal Negro Improvement Association. So basically, it's just showing you, um, this is um, a, a preamble, well, no, the preamble is down here, but this is like a preface that someone gave, showing you what was taking place. This is in 1920, in August, from the 1st of August to the 31st of August, we had that mighty conference, and, um, you know, that, that where we got the Declaration of the Rights of the Negro Peoples of the World. Okay, so basically, it said here that uh, be it resolved that the Negro people of the world, through their chosen representatives in conversion, in convention, pardon me, assembled in Liberty Hall in the city of New York and the United States of America from 1st to the 1st of August to August 31st in the year of our Lord 1920, protest against the wrongs and injustices they are suffering at the hands of their white brethren and state what they deem uh, their fair and just rights, as well as the treatment that proposed to demand of all men in the future. We complain, so they just have their complaint. We complain that nowhere in the world, with few exceptions, are black men accorded equal treatment with white men, although the same situation and circumstances although in the same situation and circumstances, pardon me, but on the contrary, are discriminated against and denied the common rights due to human beings for no other reason than their race and color. We are not willing, we are, we are not willing to be accepted as guests in public hotels and inns of the world for no other reasons than our race and color. In certain parts of the United States of America, our race is denied the right of public trial according to other races, according to other races, when accused of crime but are lynched and burned by mobs and such brutal and inhumane treatment is even practiced upon our women. We complain that the European nations have parceled out among themselves and taken possession of nearly all the continent of Africa, and the natives are compelled to surrender their land to aliens and are treated in most instances like slaves. I'm not going to read all of that for sure, just giving you an idea what is said, said there in the complaint. But now he has here... Uh, basically, in order to encourage our race all over the world and to stimulate it to overcome the handicaps and difficulties surrounding it and to push for a higher and grander destiny, we demand and insist on the following declarations of rights. And it goes down, you know. Be it known to all men that whereas all men are created equal and entitled to the rights of life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness, and because of this we, the duly elected representatives of the Negro peoples of the world, invoking the aid of the just and almighty God, do declare all men, women, and children of our blood throughout the world free citizens. 
as a type of villain, yeah? and do claim that them as free citizens uh, of Africa, the motherland, and of all motherland of all Negroes. Okay, so that's a lot. I mean, you can go and we ain't going to be turning Baba Every Time program into no, you know what I mean? But number 39 of the protocol, that the color of the red, the black, and the green be the colors of the Negro race. That's a serious point. We're looking to close on that point. Let me search for a specific picture here. That the colors of the red, the black, and the green be the colors of the Negro race. Okay. I think that throughout this program, my good brother, albeit it may seem a little, you know, I don't know, maybe long-winded to some, or we have, oh, we have, Go ahead, brother. Teach. <laughs> we have definitely proved. We have definitely just from the outset. Even before I came on here and you had a picture of Marcus Garvey and the Olmec, I think we have already proven just by that look alone that there is a direct link. And interestingly, the first place Marcus Garvey ever went when he left Jamaica as a young man, as a timekeeper, was to work in Panama. That's the same area they find some of these head structures too. A timekeeper on a banana farm. As I said, we made the link with Huracan, the Olmecan Lord Packle and his mask, where Lord Packle shall return. That's what the mask is saying in general. Lord Packle shall return as an Olmec. That's Marcus Gavin. He is Lord Packle. Straight up. You know, and, and other things. Marcus Garvey is the An Anubis, the Anpu that wraps the dead. Is he wrap us, you know? Marcus Garvey is who wrap us, the dead people. We are the dead Asar. We are the dead Osiris, eh? That was cut up into many pieces. It's Marcus Garvey. Everybody else come and try the hecka and the hocus pocus, and we couldn't move. Marcus Garvey is who wrap us up in the red, black, and green and brought us to life. And that is why I say, no matter what tradition you are, as a black conscious tradition, whether it be of the Hebrew Israelites, whether it be of the nation of Islam, whether it be of the gods and earths, whether it be of whatever, well, I wouldn't even say Rastafari because it is Rastafari. I don't have to tell Rastafari I have to tell Rastafari that. Rastafari is the one. Rastafari is the one. The name of Marcus Messiah. The name of Marcus Messiah. Is the right. alone is that I can place Marcus Gabi at least as a as a group. Really, I would say. I know there are individuals that see the divinity of Gabi, but as a group, as a concept, is Bobo Shanti alone that's that talk about Marcus Gabi being God. No, I'm saying what you're looking at here is what they call the Olmec, some say the main calendar, but, oh, but the great Dr. Phil Valentine done show us that these are the Olmec main people. And even if you notice here, just as the general said, he would teach us that the Olmec also represent best. That is why sometimes you see him with the tongue sticking out. And when you go all over the world, set it, touch it, and show you all the different Greek statues and European statues with the tongue sticking out like Michael Jordan going to the hoop, it represents the god Bess, which is the god of childbirth. Now, is the Olmec here too? This is an Olmec figure. Now, when they were speaking of the end of the world, 2012, everybody remember that. 21st day of December, the whole world was supposed to come to an end. Why? Because the main calendar said so. Wow. Okay, good. Now, that day, the 21st of December, 2012, there was an astronomical alignment. That's a fact. Obviously, it doesn't seem like the world came to an end, but that doesn't mean 
something didn't happen. <laughs> when the Earth and the Sun and the center of the Milky Way galaxy, which is known as the galactic womb, that's where Sagittarius the hunter, you know, the archer has his, his arrow pointed perfectly on the center of the galaxy, the Milky Way, the black hole that's in the center. When the sun and the earth aligned with that center galaxy there, the center of the galaxy, that was the 21st day of December, 2012. I don't know who told the world or told anyone that the world was going to come to an end, but you see, that's our problem. You check it. Jonah was swallowed by the fish. That's a very good story. I, I like it, you know I mean? I like it. It has a lot of rich meaning to it. But you don't believe that Jonah was swallowed by a fish. But you see, that's the problem. We forgot that all stories belong to Anansi. And all of these solar books and these, these ancient scrolls and writings that we read should be read esoterically. If there is any literalism in them, it's not as much as the allegory. But we miss that point. So a lot of allegory now becomes literal to us. So, oh, yeah, the world will come to an end. How is that going to happen? The, the, what, the, the, the planet is going to blow up? Explain to me. Don't tell me Jesus coming back. They never came before. So the point is that within the writings, there's a lot of esoteric levels. Something came to an end. Trust me, that day was the end of something. It was the end of a cycle. Too. That's the reality. But... The point I'm making is that the Olmec calendar officially came to an end on the 12th, uh, the 21st day of December 2012. How old is this old uh, Olmec calendar? It is approximately 5,000 years old. 5,000 years old. 5,000 years old. Okay. And it came to an end when? On the 21st day of December 2012. Okay. That's a long time. The, are the man's 5,000 years old? No, I don't think so. Not, no, it's the Olmex, man. The Olmex was in the region. Okay. I mean, the man's could be 5,000 years old, you know, but what I'm saying, the civilization 5,000 years ago that was keeping up Mesoamerica was the Olmec. That's my point. Okay. So it ended on the 21st day of December. So when did it begin? Now, there's a bit of argument amongst the scientists and anybody who studied this will know. There's an argument between the 12th of August and the 13th of August. But the year is 3114. So the Olmec calendar began on the 13th of August. Well, that's the date I, you know, that's, that's basically the date most scientists will, will use, archaeologists. The 13th of August, 3114. That's the date this calendar began. So you could say the Olmec, well, they call it the main calendar, but the Olmec main calendar, if you want to, to mark the beginning of the civilization, you'd have to use the date the calendar began, which is the 13th day of August, 3114 BC. The other date is the 12th of August, just a day before. And I mean, the 12th and 13th can overlap each other because some people call the night, the morning, the, the, the beginning of the day. See, like it's night now, this is Saturday night. But in some cultures, this would be Sunday night, meaning that the night come before the morning. The Bible says that, an evening come before the morning. So Sunday night really comes before Sunday morning. It's a kind of mystic science. This world very back way, the night, the, the night begins the day. So they may be wrestling over the 12th and the 13th when it's the same time. But what I'm saying, the 12th of August is the birthday of Vishnu, not Vishnu, pardon me, Krishna. The, third, the 12th of August is the birthday of Krishna, which has a lot of similarities to the Olmec and a lot of similarities to Marcus Gavi. 
And as I said, the accept, accepted date of the beginning of the Olmec calendar is the 13th of August. Interestingly, in 1920, Marcus Garvey utilized the whole of August. How did we begin this program, my brother? We began talking about the 1st of August. That is when the Congress began, the, 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 uh, the, the Negro gathering of all the Negro peoples of the world. The, the, the whole session took a whole month and it was the whole of August and it began the 1st of August which represents the Emancipation Day from 1834 for those who just came in that's how we began and the 1st of August again represents in 1914 the beginning of the Universal Negro Improvement Association and the 1st of August also in 1920 now is when the, the gathering and the conference of the free Negro people began in Harlem, New York, the 1st of August. Mystically, the 17th of August, you know, while a conference would be going on, the 17th of August would have been Marcus Garvey's 34th birthday. So in the middle of that con 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 conference, Marcus Garvey celebrated his 34th birthday. That means when the conference started, he was 33. He was 33, a living living allegory because eh? don't play with a man when he's 33 years old eh? that's the age of Christ that's the, the date in the pyramid the pyramid's queen's chamber 33 AD and we don't know the 33 the 33 vertebrae in the backbone the, the, the you know the, the lines of latitude and longitude the, the volcanoes and the pyramids and the certain structures that you find on these latitude and longitude 33 degrees so we understand the science of the 33 is very high. He was 33. Your American Eagle have 33 feathers in one of its, its, its wings and 32 in the other one, 32 and 33, the highest ranks in Freemasonry. So he was 33 at the time. 1st of August, 17th of August, and on the 13th of August, 1920, that's when Marcus Garvey established. This is a brand new beginning for black people, the man. We, we have to understand this. Marcus Garvey took a whole month to reconstruct black people. This is the man that we forget about. This is the man that we act as if we don't even know he came to America. Some of us talking about ADOS, no disrespect to your movement. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not saying this to disrespect you at all. But sometimes we got to think before we talk. Because I know if Marcus Garvey didn't leave these little islands here and come wake you up, you would still be dead. I don't care who else come with anks. I don't care who else come with books. I don't care who carry you on a trip to Egypt. Nobody would have moved if Marcus Garvey did not come. And Marcus Garvey established our banner on the very same day that the Olmec people started their calendar. We are celebrating in a few short days, 100 years of the red, black, and green, the 13th day of August. Garvey set that up. The 13th day of August, 3114, is the first date that's New Year's Day for the Olmec calendar that was established 5,000 years ago. Now, that may seem like a coincidence, but after all that we have said, my brother, in the last almost two hours, it's undeniable that Marcus Messiah Garvey is the living spirit of the shy people, also known as the Almec. Holy man, you will have. Holy man, you will have. Yes. 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 My Lord. Yes, my Lord. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's going to take me 
looking at this quite a few times to really digest what the priest has laid on us, family, some very powerful and heavy uh, information. And uh, if you don't have your third eye and Kundalini open, it, you're going to need to go through some serious meditation to digest what the eye, just uh, what we just received on this blessed Sabbath day from the mighty island of Antigua. Shout out to the De Freitas family, Chu Chu Faso, uh, and others in the in the Chew. island. And, uh, yeah, shout out, shout out to the Benjamin family. This is the same little mighty island that Von yeah. Benjamin. Yes, yes, midnight. Shout out to his brother Ron. It's gonna something happening. Priests, highly spiritual Africans, <laughs> black folks coming out of Antigua family. And uh I definitely recognize it when I see it, and I'm sure our people do too. And uh, Priest, if you don't have anything else you want to share with the family, I have the, uh, his email right here, family, to purchase um, these documentaries and so forth. And I'm just speechless. I got I to gotta meditate on this for a long time. Yeah. Thank you so much for laying this information on me. On me, sir. Um, thank you so much. Well, yes, my brother. Um, yes, my brother. Um, yeah, give thanks. Yeah, 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 give thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, um, give thanks, my brother. As I said, the, the video itself, The Night of the Black Tiger, um, we are actually, eh, let me just tell you straight, we actually have a special that we're doing until the, the 17th of August. We it's somewhat kind of just extended it to our audience, but since I'm here, it's one family, we are actually giving that video away free until the 17th of August. That's Marcus Gabby Bird. So to be honest, you don't have to buy that from me. All you have to do is to contact me and say, well, please, Liza, I would like to get a copy of The Night of the Black Tiger, no charge, and I will send you the video, and it's there for you, and you could, that, that's it, it's there, until the 17th of August, you know. But at the same time, my brother, as I said, we also have just as impactive as such, uh, the documentary, the the divinity of Haile Selassie the first. This is known as the mass ceremonies. When we come next time, I think we're going into some some Haile Selassie talk. This is the mass. This is the mass ceremonies. Uh, that's one DVD documentary. We have another DVD documentary. Another DVD seven. Seven, which is the, the divinity of the Honorable King Emmanuel Charles Edwards, and then the Night of the Black Tiger. So these are three DVD documentaries, which, as I said earlier, we are also ushering those out um, on, on a special. Let me just share something with you. We're ushering those out on a special, so you could get those three documentaries um, just for a, 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 the, each documentary is really valued of uh, twenty dollars, but we give you a bundle for fifty, as we do with our books. The last time I was here, we we're showing you about our three books: the book, the True Biblical Land of Israel, which again, my brother, I'm not. A, I gotta tell you, you know, you know, I I I would hope that ones that are Hebrew Israelites and Christians, no disrespect, I'm not, believe me, you know me, I'm not here to fight nobody's religion outlook at all. I find that I could get along with everyone. But I mean, it's a concept that I think is important for us to look at about the land of Israel, according to the biblical description, which really highlights to me Africa plus Arabia. So that is really in the book, The True Biblical Land of Israel, 
And of course, you know, we did a program already on your show highlighting the heavens declare the glory and the book Anu, which you're talking about, Antigua and the Megaliths. These three books as well, just like the three video, we have them for a special price. All you have to do is contact us. We give you more information. And believe me, my brother, we have a lot of other goodies and gifts. As you know, I do a nightly radio program where I have subscribers that subscribe monthly to the radio program. But at this moment, we are having so many giveaways that when you buy the three books or you get the three videos, you get a whole month's free worth of the radio program. Every day you just get it sent to your, your inbox, your email. So we have a lot in store that I can't spit everything out right here. And also, you know, I was supposed to show this to you. This is very important. Let me just show this to you. Um, I have some students, my good brother. As you know, we do a, a international homeschool class, and I'd like to show your audience. I spoke of it the last time I came here. I'd like to give them an idea of some of the results that we've been seeing. Now, Marcos Gavi, this this is from. Let me see. Oh my, I don't have the names at hand, but I know for sure we have we have Ashai and we have Eloha Daniel. These are, this is some of the projects I asked them to do for their African heritage. These are young children, eh? Young children, 11 and uh, 13 and, you know, of that age. This one is from young Mike, Mike Duong. So what they did, you know, because we do our international homeschool, this is a homeschool program that we have, my brother, that we send out every single day. We do astronomy and African history and heritage. This, this, this is um, this is from the kindergarten students, where we ask them to, we show them the pictures, and all they had to do was to put the name of the individuals. But obviously, we would have done classes on this. The classes are very short; they're just twenty to thirty minutes. Every day, though, every day you're going to get it in your in, in your inbox. And, and it's said that the child, you know, is attracted to it. We teach them about the heavens, the movements of the stars. We, we, we really impact them, my brother. If you have a child, trust me, and they get two months' worth of our homeschool program by the end of two months, and that's just two months, it goes for a whole year. At the end of two months, I promise you, you will see a difference in their intelligence. And you see, this is what we need. We need when our children go around, these are the children at school, it, it blows their mind like, where did you learn that? Because we, we, we are afraid to teach our children, you know what I mean, the knowledge that we are acquiring as if they're too young for that. Hey, as I always say, right, if you go and you buy one of those Gerber food or one of these ready-mix food for your baby, I'm not encouraging nobody to give their baby this stuff. But the point is what they do, they take the same food that we eat or they eat and they manufacture it in such a way and package it in a way that it is palatable for the baby. So that's what we need to do. Look at what babies are talking about. Babies, put this together, no, my brother. Babies, Marcus Gavi. Some big people don't know about Marcus Gavi. Queen Nzinga, Menelik II, Tutankhamun, Kwame Nkrumah, the richest man in the world, and Akhenaten. Some big people don't know about it, you know. And and what makes it good is when you have the children. Some go and research, some clip it out, some photocopy, some even draw it. So when you draw it, it's it's etched in your mind. And this is the sort of things that we do specifically. We are very big when it comes to education right here in the islands, just like anywhere else. They're not putting no African history and heritage in the school. We fight for that. We've been fighting for that for years. As you know, we do an essay competition every single year for African History Month where we get gifts galore and give them to children who, not just for free, who take the time to write essays on the subject area that we put to them because this is something that is very dear to our heart, the upliftment of our children. So just sharing that with you, my brother, showing you the progress of the homeschool program that we began. And even for your audience, anyone that's interested, that's interested. in getting their children, you know, a part of our international homeschool program, just contact us. By the email you have. There. By the email you have. There. Yes, my brother. Yes, my brother. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, priest, you blessed 
Baba T, once again, my Lord, blessing, blessing to you. And on that note, family, you see on the screen here, uh, the priest's email, you can contact him for any information or, you know, give the brother a shout out and breeze in with him and uh, purchase what he has to offer. Um, this is priceless right here. This is priceless. And as Marcus Garvey would say, race first. Race first. And everything else will take care of itself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. On that note, family, I want to say peace. Greetings. Black power. My Lord, yes, sir. My Lord, yes, sir.